Certain types of theories are always interesting to a Song of Ice and Fire fans, be it speculating on characters' potential fake-out deaths, potential true identities, or even the true parents of Jon Snow. There is one individual, however, who seems to be at the centerpiece of a number of these theories. One person who, despite supposedly dying before the main story even begins, seems to be a very important player, at least in the minds of many fan speculations. Today, we are going to discuss this character, her history, and the implications that she may play in the main story of A Song of Ice and Fire, in addition to my opinion on a variety of theories involving her, either current whereabouts or involvement in the previous story. Today, we discuss Ashara Dane. So who is Ashara Dane? She doesn't appear in Game of Thrones or directly in A Song of Ice and Fire, but we do hear a fair bit about her. She's a young woman who grew up about 20 years ago. She'd be about the same age as Ned Stark and Catelyn Tully, were she still alive at the time of the main series, which she potentially might be. Ooh, I don't, I don't think she is. We'll get into that a little bit later. Specifically, she's a member of House Dane, a noble family from Dorne, and serves as one of the handmaidens to Princess Elia Martell, wife of uh, Prince Rhaegar Targaryen and future potential queen of Westeros. Ashar is mentioned by a number of characters throughout the story, and despite her relatively niche role in the fact that the Danes don't have much of a historical presence outside of this specific era, she is made note of by a number of characters in this specific time period. We have three main sources on who Ashara is, which I'll go through in roughly chronological order in terms of how they were revealed to us. In the first book in the series, Ashara's name comes up a couple times, specifically in Catelyn's viewpoint chapters and once when Cersei is talking to Ned. She's brought up as this maiden who died long ago, who was a potential mother of Jon Snow. That is a common idea, and other than the fact that potentially Jon's mother is just some common woman named Willa, the main assertion is that Ashara Dane could be uh, John's true mother. Specifically, we hear memories of Kat bringing this possibility up to Ned, and Ned completely freezing up at this mention and saying that Ashara should not be mentioned from that point forward, and she was not. This is evidence later in A Storm of Swords, where uh, Arya Stark meets uh, Edric Dane, the uh, nephew of uh, Ashara, and he is surprised that she has no idea who his aunt was. The second account we have on Ashara Dane comes from A Clash of Kings, where young Jojen and Mira Reed have just arrived at Winterfell and are regaling young Lord Bran Stark with a story about someone who's fairly important to them. We hear about the tourney of Harrenhal and a frog boy who participated therein. Specifically, that frog boy is likely Howland Reed, the pair's father, and we hear a lot about his interactions with a number of characters. Specifically, despite Ashara not being mentioned uh, by name and not being particularly relevant to this story as it just runs in its entirety, she is mentioned and a fair amount of attention is brought to her. Specifically, we hear of her dancing with a number of people uh, at this tourney. We hear that she dances with Prince Oberyn Martell, with a Knight of the Kingsguard, and with the best character in the series, John Connington. We also hear that Brandon Stark, Ned's older brother, had to ask uh, Ashara to dance for Ned, which is cute on Ned's behalf, and then the pair eventually dance. This is a pretty sweet story from a child's perspective, but it is fairly vague in terms of details, and there are really no characters directly named, so it seems as though at least these kids don't have a full picture of what might have gone on necessarily. The final account we get of Ashara Dane comes from the most recent book in the series, A Dance with Dragons, where we learn that one of our viewpoint characters was in love with her. Not Ned Stark, as many believe, but Barristan Selmy thinks back on Ashara a number of times throughout his chapters in A Dance with Dragons, specifically remembering the Harrenhal tourney. At this tournament, he faced off against Prince Rhaegar Targaryen in the final list. Had he won, Barristan claims that he would have named Ashara Dane his queen of love and beauty. He had this longing for her that seems to have spanned years and is fairly uh, unique in terms of Barristan's emotions as he is someone who's very obsessed with duty otherwise, and this is a rare moment where you get to see him kind of express an internal desire of his own. Now that we've gone over the facts that surround Ashara, we can begin to peel back some of the speculation that also surrounds this fairly mysterious character. The outermost layer, and the one that I personally believe the most, is it seems as though she might have had some relationship with Ned or Brandon Stark, it's unclear which. A number of sources agree on this, particularly the Reed story seems to indicate it, with uh, Ned being the final dance of the evening and Brandon being the one to actually ask her. And additionally, Harwin tells Arya that it is fairly likely that Ned did have at least some 
some relationship with Ashara, as at the time, Catelyn was not a betrothed to Ned. She was betrothed to his older brother, Brandon, as Brandon was the heir to Winterfell. This seems fairly likely, though it is worth noting that there really isn't much thought about Ashara in Ned's perspective, which, if she was this kind of long-lost love, as some tend to paint it, I think there probably would be. The thoughts turn often instead to the Tower of Joy and similar things, but not really to Ashara. I think that the evidence seems fairly likely that there was some sort of affair that went on at Harrenhal, and it's unclear exactly who that might have been with. It could have been Ned, it could have been Brandon, or it could have been someone else entirely. There is some evidence to support the idea that Ashara did have some sort of affair at the Harrenhal tourney, specifically given the fact that she miscarried the following year as she had a daughter who was stillborn and there is no direct evidence as to who the father is. So it seems as though something happened at Harrenhal, and after that point, Ashara's life does seem to have gone fairly downhill. We don't hear of her much in the historical record after that until the very end of Robert's Rebellion, or we hear of Ned coming back to tell her of her brother Arthur's death at the Tower of Joy, and we hear that shortly after that, Ashara threw herself from the tallest tower at Starfall and was supposedly killed after this. This is where some more fan speculation comes in, and I disagree with this speculation pretty heavily. Martin's been pretty coy about a lot of characters in A Song of Ice and Fire, particularly the ones with kind of unknown fates, and a lot of people think because of this coyness, Ashara might be alive. However, the only real evidence that this could even be the case is something that Martin said once at a panel in the 90s. He said that Ashara's body was never found, which to me, doesn't really sound like A, he's really committed either way, or B, he's even really thought about it, or that she would have some larger role in the future of the story as a character who is still alive. I don't particularly think that Ashara is someone who would be alive, as I don't think her continued life would really change the story in any major way. I think that any reveals that uh, she would be able to do would be pretty much moot. Insofar as if she were the mother of Jon Snow, which we'll get into in a little bit here, I don't think that her being able to reveal that is particularly compelling narratively, nor do I think it has any real narrative purpose, because like, if Jon is revealed as the son of Rhaegar, then yeah, he's the rightful king, he's going to have a claim on the throne, and the story changes quite a bit. If Ashara is just able to say, oh hey, Jon, Jon's my son, that really doesn't change anything or do anything for the narrative, and I don't think it's particularly likely. There is at least one individual who a lot of readers think could be Ashara Dane, that being Septa Lamor. Septa Lamor is the Septa who is traveling with Aegon the Sick Targaryen and training him in the ways of the faith and trying to essentially culture him and turn him into a better ruler. She travels on a ship called the Shy Maid with Tyrion for a few chapters in A Dance with Dragons, and we hear a fair bit about her and talk to her a decent bit. I don't think that she is a Shardane. The main thing that people point to as evidence for this is the fact that Tyrion points out stretch marks on her body that likely came from having a child at some point in life, which is unusual for a Septa, as they're typically people who are not able to have relations with others. So that is something that Ashara also did, likely, insofar as she did give birth. But that said, Ashara does have one striking feature that nearly every account of her mentions, her striking purple eyes. Barristan mentions this, Kat mentions this, uh, the Reeds mention this, it's very notable about her, as purple eyes are pretty rare outside of people who are Valyrians. Tyrion never mentions this, and his physical descriptions of Lamar are on the graphic side, as I just reread those chapters, and he's uh, he likes Lamor a fair bit. Overall, I don't think that Lamor being a Shardane would really add to the story at all, and even if she were, I think that would be maybe more evidence that maybe a Shardane could be Aegon's father, if not John's. I think that might make a little more narrative sense, but really not much. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, overall. I don't really think that Lamor is Dane. Lastly, the elephant in the room is Ashara Dane, Jon Snow's true mother. Many think so, Catelyn Stark thinks so, but overall, I really don't think that makes much sense. There's so much evidence pointing towards Jon being Rhaegar and Lyanna's son that it really doesn't re uh, track for the story to follow a direction otherwise. Specifically, the one piece of evidence that always comes back for me 
is uh, the blue rose growing in a wall made of ice. Specifically, this vision from the House of the Undying that Daenerys has in A Clash of Kings that really doesn't line up with anything else unless Jon is specifically Lyanna's son. Because blue roses aren't associated with any other character, and Jon Snow is currently at the wall. That makes sense that this blue rose would specifically be there. As I said earlier, Ashara Dane really doesn't make much sense as Jon's mother. I believe she's intended pretty much as just a red herring for the reader. It makes sense that Catelyn, being someone who has had a lot of brain space taken up by her husband fathering a child out of wedlock with her, she would be speculating on who Jon's mother might have been and why Ned might have done this. I think it very much tracks for Cat to have thought, oh, maybe this person who's famed for her beauty, who Ned might have had some connection with a long time ago, could potentially be Jon's mother, but I don't think that really lends any credence to the overall theory. I think that Ashara Dane might have had a kid with Ned, might have had a kid with Brandon, but uh, overall that child did not survive, and Jon Snow is pretty much uninvolved in that. Also, I will say, if we are judging who Ashara Dane's uh, baby daddy is just based on how much point of view characters think about her, it's Barristan Selmy by a mile. He thinks about her more than anybody else, other than maybe Kat, who's kind of jealously thinking about her at times in books, but overall I think that Barristan is someone who is much more into Ashara than anybody else was, because Ned really doesn't think about Ashara. When Cersei confronts him with that knowledge, the, the thought that, oh, is Ashara Dane John's uh, true mother, he doesn't even blink or address it at all. He addresses her other concerns, but not specifically that one. It seems as though that Ashar and Ned might have had some passing connection, but overall it's unclear as to what. Barristan does also mention that she was looking at Stark at the end of the tournament, but doesn't say which Stark, which is why I've kind of referred to both Brandon and Ned as kind of a single unit for this video, as I think that it could be either of the two of them that Ashara had something with at Harrenhal. Brandon has also been mentioned by Martin as someone who could potentially have bastards in the story, but he did not mention anyone specifically by name or even areas as to why these bastards would show up. So, I don't know, he could be the person that got with Ashara, but there really isn't any strong evidence other than her looking at a Stark. He could be Darkstar's father, who knows? I feel like my head has just been hit by a meteor because inspiration has just struck me as I am recording this. This part is not scripted, but I think there's another character who could fit the bill as Ashara's potential kid. Ashara's kid would be a little older than Rob and John, who were born at the end of Robert's Rebellion. He would be born just before Robert's Rebellion. You know who is born just before Robert's Rebellion? You know who is a Dane, has purple eyes and notably darker features, who could potentially be Ashara's son, as we know nothing about his family other than the fact that he is a member of Ashara's house? Darkstar. I have zero evidence for this, but I think it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's something. I think I'd believe that before Jon Snow is Ashara Dane's kid, specifically because I think that Darkstar is someone who does have kind of a mysterious origin, and it would make sense that, oh, maybe Ashara Dane isn't alive, but maybe that kid might have survived and grown up to be this emo guy who slashes a kid's face. I don't know. I think that, I don't know, the entire story hinges on Darkstar. I'm sure of it, and I think that, I think I've cracked the case in this instance. But where does Darkstar being the Minotaur factor into all of this? Thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I talk about A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, and House of the Dragon all the time. And I'd really appreciate your support to help the channel grow. It makes me happy. It's free. And uh, yeah, I hope to make more content that you enjoy in the future. I will have more coming in the very uh, near, I just said future, but I'm going to say it again, future. Uh, and I look forward to sharing that with all of you, especially with the new knowledge that House of the Dragon Season 2 is dropping in June of this year, which is awesome because I will not have law school assignments while it is going up. So I am looking forward to that. I hope you are too, and I will see you all in the near future. Goodbye.